headline Spencer doesn't believe in aliens. Yeah. That's, that's going to go around the, yeah. as soon as this gets published. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cartier. I am Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's Web. You've been her before. Have I? Yeah. Can you be the pig? Do you know that? I, you know, I, 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 I don't remember the, wait, Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's, Charlotte's the spider. Web. Oh, was there not a pig in that story? Weren't they friends? The pig and the spider? Yeah, I thought so. And then wasn't the pig being killed? And like the spider ends up helping, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, yeah that sounds about right. All right, I'll be Babe. That's a different movie. <laughs> <laughs> and this here is Frank, who um, a little late to the game, but just watched Top Gun. Maverick. Oh my gosh, he looks just like him. Yeah, so he is. Uh, he's gonna be. He was trying to grow a mustache, but he couldn't uh, do it in time for the show. Oh my gosh, that's really funny. Um. How you guys doing? It's a beautiful Thursday, um, July 14th. It's July 14th, which is a magical calendar date. It's a magical day. Who said? It's Mac and Cheese Day. Is it? Yeah. It's a Mac and Cheese-ical day? It's a Mac... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that was pretty cheesy of you. It's Mac and Cheese Day. Uh, not the biggest Mac and Cheese fan. Some people love it. I used to hate it because it, to me it's so very bland, but I've grown to tolerate it you know what's funny i get a gluten-free you know one what's funny i'll tell you what's funny tell me i am very against bland you know like i want extra saucy yeah. like messy give me like pulled pork extra barbecue sauce i want right. to make a mess and yeah mac and cheese is as simple of a dish as, even if i'm eating grilled cheese give me some tomato soup like yeah my, my favorite even the color is like, just... one of my favorite sandwiches is a french dip sandwich because it's like I get a sandwich and then I get to dip it into more juice. Right. So you think mac and cheese. I cannot eat any kind of mac and cheese. Like buffalo chicken mac and cheese. Or lobster. Lobster. Like don't put anything in my mac and cheese. That's like one thing where it's like it ruins it for me. I don't want your, your specialty mac and cheese. Right, right. Give me mac and cheese. <laughs> or give me death. That the very famous Patrick Henry said that. I think I think yeah. so. Yeah. Um, it's a magical calendar date. Do you know why? Um, seven fourteen twenty two. Yeah, not the twenty two part. Uh, I feel like seven fourteen. I feel like last year on this day it was pretty cool because it was multiples. I know. Seven fourteen. Well, forget 21. that part. But it's just the fact that the it's seven fourteen. It's doubled from. Oh. Seven and seven is fourteen. Well, isn't there a lot of those days? Like, isn't that six twelve and five ten and what's four, happening? Eight? Oh, 510 is the correct. You're correct. April May 10th. 8th, May, but why did April... you say 612? Why would that be? Oh, right. <laughs> Math was never your strong suit, was it? June 12th. Because I'm thinking of the month, the name. Oh, yeah. So yeah, June, June 12th, 12th yeah. and May 10th. And, it's and guess what? March 6th. Oh, I, I'm so close. I was May 11th. I know. <sighs> and um, Bruce was December 24th. So he gets a magical day. Magical day. 1224. So it's it's magical. Um, That's all I have. Yeah. Cool. I, I well, like... I don't. I have. I know them all from January second. Oh. Well, uh, I would hope so. I know October twentieth. Do you know what February is? <laughs> Fourth. Nice. <laughs> cool. Um. Yeah. It's, it's hard. So and... it's probably the witches. This is this is a spiritual podcast, but the um maybe not but and and uh, <laughs> the witches are probably busy because the magical date with the full moon. Oh, it's a full moon today. Yeah. Well, it came in last night. The oh. the buck moon or the. I think it might be Capricorn Moon. I don't know what it the is. Howling but, Moon. How about the moon? Like a really big moon. I'm surprised you didn't see it. And you were out. Well, I'm not usually staring up at the sky. No, you were probably just staring at the ground. No, like studying for Yeah, I was it was it Quizzo was, or whatever. Listen, all right, yeah. I got second to last place on Quizzo, and that is success. Yeah. That you know how good it felt to hear my name not being called first? No, that's great. Because they do it in backwards order. So yeah. it, was, it was always like the first thing you hear, and I'm like, it is my team. But no, someone else's team. Practice makes progress. People used to say practice makes perfect, but then that was like, uh, it's too much pressure. But you're a perfect example of yeah. practice makes progress. You've been practicing Quizzo for years at last place, and now you've progressed if... to second to last place. Yeah. No, I don't know. My thing about Quizzo is like, it's, what this is what bothers me because I go to a, one certain Quizzo mm -hmm. and. If that's the problem, do you, yeah, a different oh, 100% one. is the problem. And so, <laughs> do you know like Einstein's thing of like, if you judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree, he'll spend his whole life thinking he's dumb. 
Yeah. They do the same system every time, which is like Oh uh, yeah. which is like a a random trivia round, movie round, music round. I'm not a movie buff and I'm not just going to watch every film known to man. How could you? I'm not a, a music head and I at my age I haven't been alive for a lot of music that people do listen to or right. I'm an old soul and I go back and listen. I'm not that guy. I wish it was more general trivia. The first one is always a toss up on on where I'm at in the play because it's like yeah. who studies you know like right. what's the what's the uh the one of the things was like the, the biggest whale mm-hmm. or no it's the biggest dolphin oh gosh do you know what it is no because i knew what it was dolphin yeah what is it it's not even a dolphin it's uh the killer whale or the orca and or killer whale because i think because it has teeth it doesn't qualify as a whale Anyway, I I got that right, you know. But what I didn't get right is when they're playing an ABBA song, and I didn't even know who ABBA was until <laughs> uh, thirty minutes prior. Right. So that's my little bonus bit. I mean, I, right. I, I, that's that's all I have to say. All right. Second to last, that's not the worst. No, it's not. Okay. Um, what I have to say is that um, you said you were looking down, and 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 you weren't looking up, which is crazy because right now everyone is looking up. At least they're looking up the photos of looking up of um, the, the the images that the United States, you know, NASA, you know, NASA. Do you know NASA? Is <laughs> Do you know NASA? Based out of the United States. Do you know NASA, know NASA is, is. is American? Yeah, of course I knew that. That was always the thing. It was like the astronauts versus the cosmonauts because it was um, NASA versus the yeah. Russian space NASA stands for National Aeronautics and Space Administration, but it is American. I thought they closed for a while. Uh, maybe um you know and i always heard that they they um wasted a lot of our money on but but apparently they don't with an annual budget of 23.2 billion that's not a lot no well people it's just, less than ze- it's less than 0.5 percent of the overall u.s yeah well that's the thing it's federal like budget. people are i think one are pretty silly about how budgets work and then two are quick to s- see any problems in the world yeah and then say why are we looking at space? Right. Why are we spending billions on space and right. not billions on here? But it's like, yeah, uh, you know. And then one, then this comes out. It's like everyone's like cheering, but it's like, where was that energy? Time? This took, you know. So we're talking about the space, the James Webb's yes uh, telescope. telescope, yeah. And um, so obviously, basically, how do I say <laughs> in less words? Every deep space image you have seen thus far. Has been from the Hubble telescope. The Hubble, right? Which that was very famous revolutionized, in its time. yeah, seeing space. And more than that, because this is a spiritual podcast, and we're going to get into this. Yeah, told a lot of the story of how the universe was created. Yeah, which I, is a, you know a little, a little scary to some Christians when scientists come and say, "Oh, I know where this began, and uh, I'm not seeing heaven. I'm seeing a big bang." Right. Which we'll talk about that, but. Um, that was what put up in, in the nineties, I think so. And yeah, so it, it was, sounds familiar. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was th- this is now like twenty years ago, and we're still right getting things from it. So obviously, we're, we're so much more advanced technologically now, and so we have just we created this James Webb telescope yeah. that is so much more powerful, so much more accurate, so much more useful than the Hubble was. Yeah, it's it was launched December twenty twenty one. Yep, which is just just happened, and and people were were waiting. You know, at the edge of their seats. First yeah. of all, on TikTok, are you seeing like an overload of these galactic girls? No. It's like I saw one and this is, <laughs> it's awesome. And I'm happy people are excited. But it's just so funny because it's like a spitting image of each other. It's like. Oh, how funny. So one girl and she, you know, she's like, basic, I'm a space nerd. Like, I love er- everything space. And it's like, I'm excited for it. But then especially when the photos came out, I'm scrolling. It's like the galactic girl. The you know uh, space uh, Sally space girl like and they're all saying the exact same thing yeah. and I'm like what is this new niche of like because they're is. like they're all pretty girls and yeah. it's like but I love space and there's also guys talking about listen it. watch you out when you're watching TikTok with those pretty girls um, <sighs> tell, tell me about it they did a study and um, there's and there's an unrealistic oversaturation of pretty girls on TikTok in particular they they actually studied it the algorithm pushes the pretty face is forward and because of this um oversaturation yeah everyone's minds are changing to think that that's the norm uh, and they literally tell you to look around to, look around your hometown it literally girls. says that it says look around it says Get it says take a it. break and watch a documentary 
anything to see what a normal person looks like because they would take a picture of like an average girl, right? Yeah. What do you think she is? It'd be like six out of 10, five out of 10. After watching all the beautiful, beautiful people that are being pushed forward on TikTok, she's a two out of 10. Uh, It literally changes your mind. But the weird thing is why I keep saying girls. It doesn't happen with guys. Really? If a girl or a guy looks at attractive men. We're talking generally. (laughs) We're talking overall. Like not. Yes. yes. Everyone's different. Yes. Everyone's different. But this study that happened. So anyway. Yeah. I could see that being a a niche. um, A niche. The. The, the space girls. Yeah. It's a, you know. But, um, yeah, especially, I, I feel like, you know, especially now, it's, I think of people, because we are, I feel like, transitioning from before where it was, you know, very, like, pretty girls that, like, pose on a car and stuff. Like, we are moving, but we're not, like, that biologically advanced yet, where it's, like, now I don't see anything. It's, like, so it's, like, yeah, it's that, like, that sort of in-between of, like, I'm not just a pretty girl who's just going to do a little dance it's like right. i'm smart and i'll tell you about james webb yeah but no what i was going to say okay. about your pretty girls changing mind oh. you know i noticed from tiktok what that same thing but on a wealth base oh the amount like basically all your videos you would think that every like young person is very wealthy because you yeah. see them in these like, like basements that are just like full and done and right. it's like it's very much the norm to be a like uh to have an above the average wealth and, right. I, and i feel like that's bad because it's like then you look at your especially if you're young and it's like you look at what you're driving or where your friends are hanging out in a shed or something and it's like that is all so... these all these like kids and it's very casual because it's not like it's very mtv true. cribs and i'm a celebrity it's, it's just like so true i'm a normal high schooler um, but yeah i drive a bmw quickly so we can get back to web but let me quickly tell you that it's so true and and um it was very very apparent during the pandemic when everyone had to start doing Zooming from home. Yeah. So even teachers didn't even realize that the vast majority of students did, did not want to show their house yeah. on on a Zoom. Even you think, well, oh, can't you just find like a blank wall? You know, and no, I can't. You know, We can't even <laughs> find a blank wall. Look, we've, had, we've, had this, we've had this wire here for yeah. the last so, two years. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you just you see all these beautiful, you know, um, even, you know, like when you saw the Amber Heard trial, you know, every every witness who was zoomed in, you know, they had yeah. like look like a Home Depot, not Home Depot, like a home decor yeah. um, store set yeah. behind them. And that's not really what people's computer area looks like if, exactly. if they have if they have a computer. James, do you know who James Webb was? No. James Webb was some guy <laughs> <laughs> in NASA. And um I don't know. Yeah, it, it, he was from the 1960s. He ran NASA and um, 1961 to 1968, and he played a major role in the Apollo program. So, like, we're going to name this this um, observatory, which is is the size of a tennis court, um, after it's not him. Big. Yeah, and it has more detailed images, like you said, from d- from deeper in space than anything before. Yeah, the LGBTQ community is like, don't name it after him because he comes from the time which was referred to as the lavender scare and that's when the u.s government was firing everybody who was gay oh yeah the u.s government said okay we'll check they look they're like there's nothing in the records whatsoever to say that this particular man had anything to do with the lavender scare yeah so we're going to keep that name that's why we're calling it the james that's nasa that's james webb and <laughs> therefore we're just left with the images well, after the images, so the, well, the main image we're talking about today is what you've probably seen already, which is an image of the deep space, yeah. and it's just a bunch of, of hundreds of dots, but each dot is a galaxy, and what a galaxy is, is, you know, mil- really big, really big. <laughs> we're in the Milky Way galaxy, and then our solar system is a speck of, of dust, or a speck of sand in that galaxy, right? and that's, that's you know, our eight planets. And so we're looking at galaxies. So there's hundreds of millions of, of potential or millions of stars, hundreds of millions of planets. And um, not only that, if I can't believe I'm saying this because I see if I see someone say this on TikTok one more time, <laughs> I've, I've seen it a hundred times. But I mean, I guess now that I'm having to explain it, it makes sense. The image or the field of view, you okay. know, if you're taking like a photo, like this is all you're looking at. Yeah. Is... If you look at the sky and you are holding a grain of sand. Grain of sand. Not even rice. Sand is even smaller. Grain of sand. And um, so you can imagine it's... Right. Talk about infinite. Right. It's infinite. The amount of galaxies, planets. And 
what we're going to talk about today is Christianity and spirituality, uh, religion. But you don't really hear in, in um, astro- a- a- astronomical? That's not- no, and I would argue the inverse. A lot of people are going through, um, what is this one you have in... Uh, Collapse of faith, or not? Or no, like, like bigger than, like, forget about the faith. Like, oh. Yeah, like, yeah, when you, you, Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Oh, my gosh. Like you I have, like, believe- in your, like, yeah. it's like a midlife crisis, but you're having a... Spiritual... Ex- ex- existential. You're, a lot of people are having existential, existential crisis. crises. Got it. About it. And so, like, you have the, the nerdy people talking about how fascinating it is. Then you're having the people saying... We mean nothing. We are we are literally we're a speck in the we're speck in the not speck. We're even missing. We're, we're not even there. Why why are we going to work? Why are we doing anything? Right. We're pointless. Oh, you, th- you think Jesus came to your planet? Good. Why? Right. A lot of people are going through that, especially with faith. And um. So yeah. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Because I still I still have my faith. You have your faith. I still have my faith. Nice. Thankfully, thank you, Hashem, for um having mercy on me and not um giving me so many challenges that it's hard for me to keep juggling everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you well, want? Well, let's Luke? get, let's get into walk through Thursday first okay. and then we'll go start talking about it's just it. So the top one. It's walk through Thursday. Roll the intro, please. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cause walk through Wednesday just begun. All right, guys, let's just get right into it. It's walk through Thursday. The day that we open up the Bible, pick a Bible verse and talk about it. I think today's more going to be, the Bible verse is going to just help us with our conversation that we're having on our own. Okay. So today we're reading out of um, Luke twelve seven NIV. It's a new international version. Just the first line. It's, what is the number? 12? Oh, 12, 7. Oh, 12, 7. <laughs> yeah. Chapter 12, verse 7. Leave me alone. I'm looking in space. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Okay. Thank you, Luke who I believe is not going to be in the finals of the polls because for some reason the apostles don't do that well. Because uh, like I said, I the apostles why. weren't right. Like the letters of Paul were written for people to read and be inspired. Right. The The writings of the apostles were documentation right. of Jesus's life. So like for a, a, a punch for punch, they, they weren't written for the same way of like you're going to put up on your wall. They're written for you to learn about Jesus, to learn right. who he was, right. to have a connection with him. Yeah. And then Paul is like words to then live by. Right. Right. Yeah. And I found that in in the gospel writings of the apostles, it's hard to get it in one sentence. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. And, and with the letters, it's a little bit easier. Yeah. And so for this, just your background, when you are looking in Luke 12, it comes under the um, title of warnings and encouragements. And the reason he's saying... Um, you are worth more than the sparrows is because Jesus um, was explaining how that God cares for, for birds that are worth nothing in the marketplace. It's like you could buy a bunch of sparrows for a penny um, and yet he takes care of them. So um, he's, he's saying that don't don't compare yourself to other things, you know, um, and think like, so if we're comparing our little fragile skin and water bodies to this vast universe and you're like oh my gosh like we're nothing we're steam um this if you want to take this from luke it's saying but you are yeah and not only that yeah your hairs are numbered like yeah you're not you're you're trying to number all the planets it's like well he knows you so with this happens more often than you think in history these um and it's why I, i think christianity shy away from science and almost don't believe in it yeah I say ye of little faith. Like yeah. we talk about God's greatness right. and his infinite power. And then as soon as we see something that we can't wrap our minds around, yeah. we say, well, then how can there be a God? It's like, well, that's weird because a second ago you were talking about how his, his infinite vastly greatness cannot be quantified. Right. And then as soon as you see things in space that you can't quantify you're like well how how can there still be a god like how why would jesus come here? it's right. like the, the god you believe yeah if you believed in you know like a an earthly god and it was like that would make sense and if anything that's why you shouldn't follow like earthly people right it's like, yeah well they're just uh but if your god right like is the same god that we're talking about of infinite greatness 
I'm never shocked when I see things that are infinitely great, right. <laughs> like, like the space. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, so this has happened in, in history before, right? Where like we used to think that the sun revolved around us, not we, but not too long ago, yeah. like 200 years ago, of right? Like, and I mean, I'm sure you did. I mean, you were you were doing the solar system styrofoam balls, right? Like yeah. this is us and these are the planets. And, you know, it kind of makes children believe that everything else is just complete blackness. No, but I'm saying before, I'm saying like 1700s. You weren't in school in the 1700s? <laughs> no, I'm saying in the 1700s, it was scientific knowledge that the sun revolved around us. We were the center of everything. Oh, the sun revolved around us. I yes. see. Of course you didn't learn that in your school. No. no. I, just, I just meant that really simplified little yeah yeah so the sun revolved around yes. us we were on earth for a reason yeah the sun was going up and down the, like yeah sunrise sunset exactly yeah and then it came or you know newton or isaac newton was like was it isaac newton uh was like i think that the earth was revolving around the sun right. the other planet and he was attacked by the christian community to say you're not putting us first. Like, mm. how are you going to... Oh, you're going to say the sun's more important? Like, no, we are the center of everything. Right. And once so once that became scientific fact, that was a fear of like, oh, like, we're just we're just a, a, a part of, of something here. Right. And then you have, you know, with evolution. Yeah. Where it's like, wait, because like, there was creationism before that. Okay. Something created us. The same way we have to create things for them to be there. And when, you know, Darwin came and said, I have this theory of evolution that the well, human didn't just get plopped on the earth. They were evolved. Right. The, still to this day, you'll have Christians not believe that because it's like, I can't wrap my head around the fact how evolution can be a thing. And we were still created by God, which we right. believe. Right. And then with just the idea, like, like time and time again of space. And every time we learn about new planets and galaxies or people talking about aliens, there's this once again, a fear arises of, or sorry, uh, the Big Bang was was the next one that I wanted to speak about. The Big Bang was a huge problem for Christians, still is. Right. Because it's like you are given a, a mathematical scientific reason that the universe was created. Right. My reason's always been God. Right. And... So basically what I'm saying is now it's happening again. We're mm-hmm. getting this existential crisis again of what are, like, how, how are you going to say this? And that's what goes back to my original point. I'm like, yeah, if you think that, that that God is an earthly God, it doesn't make sense. But if you believe that God is so much bigger than the universe, we don't understand. Right. And you believe <clears throat> that he set off the big bang. He, our time and his time isn't the same. That's what I always say about evolution of like, he did create us and right. but he created, he gave us a world with systems and order. Right. And so he evolved us until we were the specimens. And, and, and that's then what was his final product. You know, like, yeah, it took millions of years, but when you're building something, only when it's built, you say it's here, you right. know, like, or if you grow a flower, mm-hmm. you know, like if you look at the seed, you'll say, that's not a flower. Right. Only when it becomes a flower, you're like, look at that. Look what just bloomed. Right. Yeah. But the whole time it wasn't bloomed yet, you would still doubt. Yeah. And that's when you're supposed to not lean on your own understanding. If two flowers are looking at each other and saying, um, I think you came from a seed. You would say, like, they would say, right. no, I'm just, like, all I can remember is being a flower. Right. And it's like. Which is, which is funny, you know, because all, even a baby, you know, when you see what it came from. Yeah. Um, why is it hard to believe that? That could also have happened on Earth. Um, you said you have little faith a second ago, which is interesting because another Bible verse that is helpful in this, I believe, is Matthew 630. And Jesus talks about the um, every single flower in the field and how they're taken care of, you know, in, in their life cycle. And so, of course, we'll I'll take care of you. It's, it ends with you have little faith. But um interesting to me because we are not doing Matthew 6 30 we're doing Luke 12 7 but in Luke 12 it also has the um the famous statements of what co- what happens in the dark will come to light mm-hmm. um which you always hear people say that and I find it interesting that like 
people think, oh, that's for naughty stuff you do or whatever. But it could also just be this this evolution of of intelligence, of of um, you know, exploration. Because this thing went up December twenty twenty one. Yeah. Right. It went up, and it has now given us stuff we did not have before. Yeah let alone the Hubble, like before, before. And when, now we have it and we're like, oh, now we know. Now we know what's out there. And it's like, well, no, because we still are limited. Yeah. So, the, you know, we, we can only see what we're seeing, but but we will eventually, you know, see everything. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so to know that... I remember that with the moon too, I believe. Well, one of the planets when they, they landed and they didn't think there was water. And here it turned out the, the water was different, huh? Oh. It was maybe Mars, Mars or something. Yeah. yeah. And it was like different. You know yeah. so I'm saying? Truly about our understanding of things um, as it gets revealed, then we believe totally in it. Yeah. As if that's the end of the line. Yeah. But it's Ex- not. Because exactly, yeah. there'll be something better than the James Webb, t- Webb telescope yeah. in the future. Yeah. Um, just so finishing up, the other thing people are saying is um, it's impossible that we're alone. How could we be alone in this universe? When yeah. I just told you that there's hundreds of millions of planets, you're telling me none of them can provide life. Um, any thoughts on that? I say not necessarily. I mean, just you, you, just, you can't make leaping thoughts like that because this, I, I don't think so. I, well, this is my take on it is I don't believe in aliens. Can that be proven otherwise? Headline: Spencer doesn't believe in aliens. Yeah. That's that's going to go around the. Yeah. As soon as this gets published, this is going. This is going to be on Entertainment Tonight. I don't believe in aliens in the sense of people like us humanoids, but once again, I'm not stuck in that thought. Okay. Just the way in 1700, I would believe that the sun revolves around the earth. Yeah. Until someone else came, and when that day comes. It won't defeat my Christianity. Right. I will then say, okay, once lean not on your own understanding. I'll say, it's another thing I don't understand. Just like, I'm acting like I, I understand how many planets there are, but I am just trusting the fact that well, who am I to question God's knowledge or God's power? With that being said, there's hundreds of millions of, of animals and insects on this planet. planet. Yeah. You know, like living, billions. living, breathing things. Yeah, billions. You yeah. know, with like bugs and stuff. Yeah. Or organisms. Do I think I'm the same as a a, a dog or a you know, centipede? No. And and we always talk about what makes humans different because yeah. I mean that's an existential crisis in itself of like we're just animals. Right. We're just smart animals, and it's like I believe our capacity of like you know love because I think love comes from God. Is, is one of the big separations like you have maternal instincts and stuff um in animals like you see oh the dog's caring for each other but right. i think true genuine selfless love um that doesn't need to be trained is, is what makes you know it's what why it's a soul yeah and it's what we have and so when i say i don't believe in aliens you can come and say oh, well, it's impossible there's nothing living out there and if they're going to define that as alien sure I'm sure there's there's living things out there. I don't think there is anything equal to us. I think, yeah, you might find an, an alien dog in a galaxy far, far away. But I think humans are already separated from the billions of living things that aren't humans. Right. And so why would, like, why would my belief then change on that if you showed me, guess what? We just found a living thing over there. It's like, okay, I mean, there's a million living things I can show you here that I yeah. still think that when God said he made, me, he made me in his image. Right. He was talking about me. And right. I'm not going to go up and he's a muskrat. Yeah. I, I, there, you can be unique. Yeah. You can be unique. You know, in in your own human body, like you don't have um, two hearts. Yeah. Like the heart is unique in this so much going on. In the ocean, there are unique things. Yeah. Yeah. We're unique. We're unique. So... That's our thoughts. Let us know your thought. It's a very complex topic, but um, my biggest thing is is I love science. I'm fascinated by it, and nothing surprises me. Mm-hmm. Nothing blows me away on a spiritual level mm-hmm. because I've I've said this before. Before these photos were out, I like scientific discovery because because the greater you show me of science, the m- more like. I think God's infinite. And then you yes. show me something that I didn't even, I couldn't even comprehend. 
it's I like, find it comforting. And it's like, he's even, yeah, you know what would be worse is if I, I feel like if it was very That's in a box. what I'm saying. I, and we're going over. I thought, I find it comforting because like I told you, when you're in school and, and they tell you to make the styrofoam yeah. solar system and then, and then you go, okay, this, and then it's black. And, and there's even like the scary, you know, Major Tom, you know, the yeah. astronaut and he's this. And it's like into what? Into nothingness, into yeah. nothingness. And then like to know that it's so fertile and it's yeah. so, br- you know, so many, everything's out there. I find that more, more a beautiful blanket on you. Yeah. And it just, it just, I feel like increases your, your belief in God's power. It's, yeah, you can't be, cont- his power cannot be contained. I know. Can't be contained in one solar system, in no. one galaxy. One planet. One planet, anything. One podcast. One po- <laughs> It can be contained in one podcast and scrum, quote. All right, guys, that is our podcast. Um, go out and check out the James Webb Space. Maybe there's more images up by now. Who knows? Um, until tomorrow, Dr. Seuss Friday. It's the first time we haven't it's had back, one last I week. I know. It'll be back. Uh, have fun. Peace.